Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod as the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet Irkutsk. In the last episode we defeated Sablin's hilarious little rebellion. And we did a decent amount of the focus tree. We will continue along that focus tree in this episode. Hopefully finish it off, to be honest. Uh, now, I've actually... Uh, downloaded um, all of the recent series onto my PC. I, funnily enough, I uh, I hadn't downloaded any videos um, since the Drozdovsky series. I actually didn't even finish off downloading the Drozdovsky series, so I finished downloading that. Downloaded the Lanius series, downloaded the 215th, the Iron Alliance series, the Svetlana Stalina series. I think, that, I think that was all of them. But either way, that is that, so we are once more insulated from any mishaps quote-unquote, coming from YouTube headquarters. Now, lessons from Sable. Detriment a traitor's words. While what Sable did was an awful, dis an absolute, dis an absolutely disgraceful betrayal of what the Soviet Union has stood for, it would be in our key interest to investigate his policies and possibly gain some benefit if applied. It would be deemed necessary to implement some minor reforms that originated from Sable's system in order to increase our popularity among his former supporters and make some usage out of the ideas he had fostered. Indeed. But that might just make people think, hey, Sable had, the, had these ideas, we defeated them. Or rather, you go to defeat him. Now we're adopting him. Maybe he was right the whole time. Maybe they'll want more of his ideas. Hmm. What are you working on? Research. Oh, yeah. Nice. Wait, though. Hang on. Yeah. Why did we have to research this? This was pre-1945 tech. Like, come on. How are things going on elsewhere? Yeah. yeah, it's still a bit early even for uh, Central Siberia to be expanding. Now, let's get to Port Weapons 2. All infantry and motorized defense plus 2% of breakthrough plus 2% as well. The development of automatic weapons which combine the aspects of light and heavy machine guns allows versatility in our infantry employ their equipment. I tell you, the Ukrainian conflict, uh, the actual one in our own world, is, is, is seriously picking up pace. We have we have breakthroughs in the Kherson region, Russian counterattacks in the Kherson region, but also in the Kharkov region. Um, I, th I think the Ukrainians have regained a sizable amount of territory there. I think they captured, uh, was it Balakilias? It turned like 25,000 people, which is a fucking lot. Um, especially relative to like the gains being made per day in this conflict, which, which previously was quite small, but now things are very... No. Not very quick, but much quicker than they used to be. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Very interesting. Just launched two simultaneous offensives. It's rather significant. I still don't really think the Russians can do it without mobilizing, to be quite honest. Now, a traitor's words. Uh, is there... Yeah, never mind. What is this? Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Let us get training on some training some new workers. Fantastic. It's all fine. A quick look at our economy. 0.7% growth. Fantastic, fantastic. It's all good. Actually, I should, I should, ah, should have done this. This. Oh, it's 10%. 10% research speed. God damn it. <clears throat> now, Grigori Grinko took a sip of his coffee. His eyes seemed distant. It's, inter it's, it's interesting to me how far the Buryats are willing to go for Sablin's ideas. Are our policies really so terrible? It's not like they've changed much since Bukharin's day. Nobody was raising a fuss back then. Sergei Basanov, you go to Foreign Minister, thought of what to say next. Every so often, the two would meet in unassuming locales. Actually, I'll slightly turn down the music. Uh, da, 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 da. Too disgusting that they would never dare to speak of at the workplace, lest, uh, lest they draw the attention of the feared NKVD. This particular morning, they had found themselves in a sleepy cafe in Irkutsk's suburbs, and the subject was dangerously close to becoming more controversial than usual. Besnov seemed to care little. Grigori, do you think that maybe his promises held merit? Grinko immediately halted, uh, raising his mug as he heard this, and looked up at Besnov. What are you seeing exactly? He said, raising an eyebrow. His men were willing to lay down their lives for his ideas, fought us tooth and nail, we may not like it, but there had to be something worth looking at here. It wouldn't just make sense otherwise, Grinko resumed his drinking, his posture slackening once more. 
Eh, uh, maybe. How do we know it wasn't just all talk, though? All you have to do is say the right words and people will die for you. Sablin obviously knew that well, but we'll never know if it was coming from a genuine place. Perhaps not, but who's to say we can succeed where he failed? It would surely go a long way towards endearing us to the people. Gringo looked up at Bessanov. Most of what Sablin talked about was utopian drivel, nothing more. The truth is, you can't run an effective government on ideals alone. Though sometimes I think it wouldn't hurt if we re-examined how we approach certain issues. Bessanov leaned forward, it wouldn't, right? If only Comrade Yagoda would see it that way. Perhaps we can figure something out. Not a hope. An interesting discussion for sure, but alas, nothing can be done. Or we should forget this conversation ever happened. Hmm. These are effectively the same, the same things. This only increases by a small amount. This just this increases state influence. By how much? 68, alright, that's worth it. That's worth it. Yeah. Overtake the 25 political power. Now. Rebuilding our legitimacy. Gained base stability plus 5%. The great and powerful Soviet Union has been shattered and we have all but disintegrated on the world stage. This is a catastrophe for every person within the Union. We've been torn apart from the inside ever uh, since the German invasion of our Union. Uh, falling apart piece by piece until we have been just diminished to our current state. But we won't give up so easily with such a setback. In order to accomplish our goals, our government's legit legit ah, legitimacy must be restored back to when we were truly recognized as the leaders of Russia. No matter the means that we are to take our approach for the reclamation of the Union, we must uh, regain our spot among the great powers once more and return the people of Russia to their rightful place on the world stage. I'm imagining in this timeline that Russia, well, the Soviet Union, wasn't as isolated as in our own timeline, especially when you have Bukharin continuing the NEP rather than Stalin um, going with collectivization and, you know, Stalinism. Um... Uh, the thing that's popping up in my head is uh, is one of the Kaiser Redux leaders from Russia. I want to say, is it is it Sokolnikov? Sokolnikov. Yeah, yes, it was Sokolnikov. Fantastic. Um, Sokolnikov uh, preserving Russia's trade contacts. I, I, I can kind of see that happening in Bukharin's um, union in this timeline as well. So Russia wasn't quite as isolated, uh, you know, not as or uh, Soviet Union. <clears throat> wasn't quite as isolated, not as much as of a pariah in the international community. Now, of course, they got recognized anyway, but that took, you know, it took longer. Yasuda Crisis, our first uh, super event. I was going to say, it was taking a while to clear. Ooh, our credit rating was raised. Fantastic. Let's see the uh, difference that we got there. Debt ceiling went up by 10%. Fantastic. Interest rates went down by almost 2%. Fantastic. No, thank you. Um, debt has less of an effect on our interest rates. We gained 5% stability. And debt has more of, more of an effect on our GDP growth. All right, then. Is this, our, is this our cap? Yes. Fair is our maximum. Fair enough. We'll, get, we'll probably get to, we'll get to acceptable at a regional stage. Uh... We'll probably stay at acceptable. I, I don't think that we'll guess we'll be able to go to intermediate once we unify with Vasilevsky, but we will be at, at intermediate once we unify Russia. Yeah, I think intermediate is the highest any Russian unifier can go, which is unfortunate, especially if you keep doing everything right. You know. Ooh, nice. We got our uh, extra production units. Damn, we really don't have a lot of artillery to upgrade. JLo launches the Balintalk Blitz. You are, of course, are using. In that case, keep producing these uh, these artillery guns. How many trucks do you have? Might might be better to just get rid of you and use your trucks to uh, motorize motorize our supply. Actually, I think I like that idea quite a lot. If we have to do okay, if we were to do this, that work, that won't work. Balls, this work. No, seriously? Shite. We can't even get one of them, goddammit. Alright. Good to do this. I wanna do it. Yeah, I'm doing it. 
No, there we are. Forty-two thousand seven hundred thirteen. Indeed, it does. Indeed, we do rather. And it's good to have some. Oh damn, that was a lot. No, it's good to have some men left over. So, we'll do that. No, an internal. Of, or actually, I wanted to talk about something first. So, you know, you lose, you lose a man in battle, right? It gets taken from your manpower pool. But this is untrained manpower. You know what I mean? Like, and that, that's why it drags down the experience of your division. Why can't you pre-train your manpower pool? It makes no sense, you know? Like, like, like you should be able to split up your manpower into, like, certain areas. Like, um, set, like if you, like, I've got 17,000 he, right here. I, like, I should be able to, s to select, say, 4,000 men to, uh, I'll be trained up in, uh, for fighter aircraft. Or, or for maintenance of fighter aircraft. Or just to do with fighters in general. I should be able to take, you know, 8,000 to be prepared for, you know, frontline infantry, you know, 6,000 for, for artillery, you know, stuff like that. Instead of just throwing in just these guys who have never, ever been in battle, ever, have no knowledge of the military whatsoever. Just throwing straight in. Makes no sense. I just like it. I hope that gets changed. I hope it'll likely cost me fucking money instead of it, it just being fucking updated. Okay. I can go away now. Now. An internal affair. Political power plus 25. Gain base ability plus 5%. Increases state influence. One of the core tenets of Leninism is the vanguard... Uh, the vote that failed. Oh, yeah. Is the vanguard party. The party exists to protect the people from the capitalists and help instill uh, class consciousness. Class consciousness is very important. And I'm not a Marxist-Leninist, but the oligarchs have to die. In order to achieve this goal, only the most educated and politically advanced people can run the higher functions of the state, not the average worker. To directly involve the people could risk needless inefficiency at a critical time, especially as we reorganize the union. We must rely only on ourselves to reform the state and not the people, as to maintain our Leninist ideals and prevent needless corruption along with false consciousness from ending the union. The blue military faction. Scavenge for some loot, please. <coughs> yeah, yeah, we need some men in reserve. We actually have an air force. What? Is it just transport aircraft? It is, isn't it? It is. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You can't train these guys either for some stupid reason. Just weird. Ah, oh, you've actually got 12.7mm uh, machine guns. Nice. Now, we're going to be, be training up. Now, how many trucks do we have? 332, alright. That's not bad. But, yeah, yeah, for some reason, our units move incredibly slowly in the war against Sable. I have no idea why. I'm hoping that they'll move faster against Cheetah and the rest and, you know, every other nation in the game. Though, after we unify them, we won't be fighting anyone else because the Brave New World mod is fucking gone. I am so angry about that. Well, angry it wouldn't be the right word, to be quite honest. Disappointed is, is the better word. I'm not going around the place with a, fought, with a hot fucking head over a Hearts of Iron War mod. But, um, oh, administration's purge gets removed, has been removed. Fantastic. But, like, what a massive loss. Like, from what I understand, Solstron stepped down. The, he gave it to the guy. And the guy just did nothing with it but spam links to the mod that he actually wanted to work on. Which I think was his own mod. Um, and then the thing, like, when people revolted against us, he just deleted fucking everything. Or something along the lines of that. Down, we're back in the deficit, huh? Oof, that's bad. It's to do with the army, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Ooh, that's actually good. That's gonna hit our credit, isn't it? It is. Though, to be fair, it doesn't matter that much. <coughs> actually, wait, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, Whatever you do, do not deploy. <coughs> oh, damn, I've caught. I've caught a bit. Now, oh, what's this? Industrial investments? 
and I'm fine. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> hmm. It's like a tickle in my throat. Now bolster NKVD presence. Come on. Give it to me. Slightly increases security security service policy effectiveness gains bolstered NKVD units, which grants political power gain plus ten percent encryption and uh, encryption plus twenty five percent decryption plus fifteen percent ideology ideology drift defense plus thirty percent for a full year. Peru. What was all that? Yeah, I was going to say I thought I saw your flag involved. Clerical clerical bundle of sticks or something. Yeah, you 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 get pretty much all your tree done ever since they they shortened the uh, the time for focuses. Which is fantastic. What about you, huh? You doing your full tree? Oh, you've already gotten to this tree. That probably means that you didn't do the full tree then. Which is unfortunate. You always should. Now, where was I? Uh, while we've managed to prevent ourselves from being conquered, the fact of the matter is that lawlessness is all too common here, especially in the outskirts of our territory, far away from, the, from our centres of control. In order to rectify the situation, a decision has been made to increase, increase NKVD patrols and increase their presence in the outskirts. An open showing of security will force the criminals to retreat underground and allow us to reassert our authority. Furthermore, we shall step up the duties of the NKVD from a law enforcement perspective, allowing them to assert their authority and beat back the lawlessness that has plagued our outer lands for too long. Yeah, Cheetah's about to come and... Spit roast them with Magadan. I'm getting the feeling that they didn't do their full tree. Not that it would really change much in the end, anyway. Takagi is here. Oh, <laughs> he didn't he, uh... Rodzewski does what I usually do. Yeah, you gotta cut off this and destroy these divisions, and then what I always do is push a motorized division up along the coast. Industrial investments. Cotty Nazo. A secure union. New central authority, manpower plus four and a half thousand. This will slightly decrease coring time. Our experience plus 15. Our administrative efficiency will begin to improve. Probably should have rushed that, actually. Yeah. Should have, should have gone bum rushed that. Even after the mutiny, end, the mutiny ended, there was still a large amount of discontent in the Buryatia territories. Furthermore, the mutiny required us to basically rebuild the bureaucracy as we could not truly ensure the loyalty of many of the Buryatia bureaucrats. However, as we've increased patrols and begun the process of reintegrating the discontent from Buryatia, slowly died down, eventually dissipating entirely. Oh, excuse me. Finally, our efforts have paid off as the Buryatian lands have been fully reintegrated. Ah, the SBA is gone. Good. Fantastic. You're missing what? Support equipment and anti tank? Yeah. None of that is going to be forthcoming anytime soon. Attack psych. I was going to say, was that Ray Nauts a car? Thank God. Been pouring out of the rain the last three days. Not that I mind, to be honest. After all that heat. Building up a good amount of political power. Should I... Oh, I probably should get this. Focus on research. Our academic base will begin to slowly improve for 60 days. Daily political power gain, minus 0.25. Research speed, plus 10%. That is a really handy one, to be fair.
Yep. It's about what I expected. Would have happened eventually anyway, even if Tita had done their full uh, warlord tree. Huh! <laughs> Counter attack. Lano Lima wins the Argentine election. Alright. A secure union add a secure union which grants political power gain plus 10%, encryption plus 25%, ideology drift defense plus 25%, and need consumer goods minus 10%. The existence of the conflict lords uh, throughout Russia has damaged many things. Bloody hell, that, oh, oh, that might get ugly. The people do not trust in our state's ability to ensure their safety anymore, which is truly disheartening. We need to show the people, through propaganda speeches and initiatives, that the USSR merely seeks to build a public controlism from within nurturing it in order to protect the people. Furthermore, we must ensure that the people understand that the Presidium and Yagoda do not exist just to be a distant ruler, but to ensure your safety and security in a time when that is all too rare. By increasing the rate of patrols throughout the cities and having an increased presence of security in the countryside, we can hopefully express that, yes, we will keep the people safe. Yes, that's most definitely what it's going to be perceived as. Support weapons 2. All, all infantry and motorized defense and breakthrough plus 2% enables improved automatic cannon while maintaining and improving reliability of machine guns. We can also experiment with higher firing rates to ensure the fallacy of the constant stream of bullets. Vacuum tube computing. Research speed plus 2%. Ever since, or since the end of the Second World Conflict, the old antiquated computers were not enough. Using vacuum tubes, these giant hulking electronic machines become a great aid in calculation and algorithmic tasks. It'd be hilarious if, um... If Cheetah or, or Magadan knocked the other out, and then Rodzevsky fucking came back. <laughs> oh, maybe he's lost. That's a shame. Yeah, see, or, or no, it's not the All-Russian Government of France, it's the All-Russian Government of Amur. Okay, okay, I was wrong on that. The trans bifal Principality. Now, ignited by a tragedy, the bundle of sticks of Russia perished in a farce. Now, who's got the most men? 43 versus 38. Oh, you'll, you're, you're probably going to duke it out. I could very well, or they could very well still be in a conflict with each other while, uh, while we, we uh, when we come for them. Oh, nice. We can do more stuff. Strengthen ministry powers. The autonomy of the People's Commissariats of the USSR shall be increased, and functionaries shall benefit from less direct oversight from party political organs. Increase the state influence by a small amount. Add strengthened ministries, which grants daily political power gain plus 0.15, production efficiency retention minus 10%, factory output plus 10%, and need to consumer goods minus 5%. Nice. Alright, another production unit has come online. Fantastic. I think we probably should get some, uh, get some. Basic anti-tank equipment. We are deathly short of it. Maybe even put two on it. The RPG-43, yeah. I was always surprised the Soviets never feel that a handheld, shoulder, well, shoulder-fired infantry anti-tank weapon in World War II. You know? The British had the Piat. Americans had the bazooka, and later the super bazooka. Germans had the, the various Panzerfausten. What the fuck do the Soviets have? Fucking handheld anti-tank grenades. Pia looks heavy as fuck. It's like four fucking... It's, it's, some, it's fucking heavy, I don't know what it is, but it's heavy. I must actually watch military history visualized video on whether the Pia is better than the Panzerfaust. I would take, probably take a Panzerfaust myself. Now, a strengthened mandate. Wait, do we have another production unit? It's fantastic if, if, if so. Yes, we do. Very nice. I'll take it right here. That is going to increase the debt, though. Swap York to the infantry anti tank too so we can get the G twos. It's all fine. Nice. 
Now, oh, it strengthened the mandate, gained base ability plus 10%, change in popularity of redism 10%, slightly increased political parties, one party state policy effectiveness. It seems that all of our efforts have paid off. The strengthening of security combined with the propaganda showcasing the fact that the Presidium cares for the people has allowed us to acquire a new mandate. The people trust us more and more and believe that we are the best path forward for Russia. Even in Buryatia, the people now trust us over Sablin. This new sense of legitimacy means that we can embark on further efforts without having to worry about discontent from the people. The US USSR may have been brought low, but we will restore its glory. Yes, we shall. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. Two of these divisions. Because they're costing us too much money. And we only need three for raids. And that'll help the debt. The deficit, rather. Cheetah, Magadan, Magadan, and Cheetah. Alright. Uh, that's fine. Ooh, Doctrine's available. Do not mind if I do. Uh, yes, this one. Massive bombardment. Line artillery, stop the attack plus 15%, hard attack plus 10%. Alright, maneuver warfare. Maneuver, maneuver warfare, Doctrine. Maneuver warfare is a focus on speed, overwhelming force, and decisive conflict fare. Maneuver warfare may be an obsolescent doctrine. Ha! Huh? But its core principles are still useful today. By adding modern day tactics, we can easily reapply the strategy that once guided the realm to victory, and literally any other army that ever used it ever. Locks unexpected thrust attacker. Division speed plus 10%, org laps when moving minus 10%, planning speed plus 20%, tanks and armor variants breakthrough plus 10%. Massive bombardment. The sphere punk is certainly a strong tactic, but much of it rests on the assumption that the initial attack succeeds. To maximize our chances, we, make, we must make sure that any section we attack is first pummeled by artillery and aircraft alike. In a perfect scenario, our forces will stroll over what remains of their lines without a single casualty. That is the perfect scenario, but it's likely not the scenario that'll happen. Now, the yeah, are they even moving? Oh, yeah. I'd say not. That's a shame. Yeah, why? Well, there's another wild to go. Now, continuing course gets spent reclaiming the Union. The safety of our Union was threatened by the revolt of the Sable Knights. However, with their fall comes a new opportunity to strike out in for, into our former territory. The time has come to once again set our eyes upon the motherland, and soon we will bring the light of, of uh, public control to revolutionary power to the proletariat. Once the East is um, secured with our righteous fervor and might, we shall move deeper and deeper into our lost heartland and drive the traitors who abandoned the Union back either into retreat or into the ground. With the spirited guidance of the legitimate leader of the Union, Comrade Igoda, our failure in the brutal conflicts to come is a near impossibility. The rise of the Union of Soviet Public Controlist Republics will once again let us stand alone as a shining beacon in the darkness of this world. Now, new industrial equipment, please. How is the deficit? Ah, oh, good, good, good. It's fine again. Good. Schickel Gruber is killed. Where were you when Schickel Gruber was killed? I was at home eating pierogi and telephone ring. Sickle Gruber is killed. Yes. Now, transistor computing. Research speed plus 3%. Continuing from the vacuum tube, the computers of the 60s have undergone the first steps of miniaturization. As machines get smaller, their performance increases, making them more and more ideal and affordable to use outside academic settings. Fantastic. What are you up to, PRC? Oh no, you didn't get to see. Ah, hey, you don't need to. You know what I'm gonna do? TD bug. Tag PRC. I mean, you always gotta choose the piece for route if you can. You know. Focus that auto complete. Here. 
And hopefully things will go well. If they don't, then hey, we can say that we tried. <coughs> Failed anyway. God damn it. Ah, we did our best. Oh, it's happening here. Ooh, yes, of course, the German Civil Combat. That actually wasn't too bad, all things considered. Literally nothing is happening. What we may actually see happen is um, is that one just annexes the, annex the other, which is uh, something that was implemented to basically make sure that uh, wars between Russian statelets don't last too long. But sometimes it ends up being that you get into a war with someone and you just either A, immediately annex them, or B, you immediately get annexed. Or even, like, you, even you knock them out, you're at 100%. You have them on 100% capitulation progress, and then you're the one who gets annexed. It's weird. Hans Spadel assumes control of Germania. Ah, industrial investments is here once again. Fantastic. Did that always used to say Her Majesty's most loyal resistance? Got a lot of them in there. Continuing course. Now I'm not going to roll ahead with this because we'll just waste time. And yeah, the times that we save, the time that we save won't uh, be kept. Proclaiming the union, Genrich Gora had been spending the evening as he usually did, meticulously going over the mountain of reports and dossiers that he that had accumulated in his office that day. On this occasion, however, the task was not as soul grinding as usual, for each report painted small fragments of a much larger optimistic picture. All of the Gorda's plans and hard work were finally coming together. One report stated clearly that any lingering Saberlite influence in Irkutsk had seemingly dissipated for good. It seems that all of the investigations and purges had borne fruit after all. Even now, Yagoda couldn't help but feel remnants of anger and betrayal when he thought about the foolish exploits of the mutineers and how their brazen defiance of the Union caused him so much trouble. At least now he could take comfort in the fact that they would never trouble him again. After some time, he had finally come to the real meat of that evening's readings. The Red Army's uh, reports on combat readiness, what he saw, was all the more promising. Not only did High Command report that the military was close to recovering all manpower lost during the mutiny, but also that the subsequent organizational reforms were going through without issue. Intermixed were various updates on the NKVD's espionage efforts into neighboring warlord states, and they had all come back with roughly the same conclusion. The bundle of Styxist forces were hopelessly unable to match the Red Army in pitched battle. What about unpitched battle? Once the proper plans of attack had been drawn up, Yagoda anticipated that the coming conflicts would be a mere triviality, assuming the NKVD's reports were accurate. Lighting a cigarette, Yagoda leaned back in his chair and began to think about the future. It was obvious that the conflict for the interior was coming to a close. For this point on, from this point onwards, his efforts would almost be solely focused on reclaiming whatever was wrestled away from the Soviet Union in its darkest hours. The uphill struggle to take back what was lost would soon begin, and the world would never be the same. Failure is not an option. IRK expansion. We, do we still, are we still going after Yakutia first? No. That might be after this one. That's fine. Hmm. Okay. Restoring our hold. Gain base conflicts port plus 5%, political power and army experience plus 25. Each, the restoration of the Far East to our Union is paramount before we set our eyes westward to our beloved heartlands. To our east lie the lands of reactionaries and bundle of Styxists. These are, uh, these are people who idealize the Russia of all before the revolution. These are people who idealized the very system that brought our proud union to its knees. This ind indignity cannot be allowed to stand, though. Uh, through iron and fire, we shall show them uh, that we are strong, that we have always been strong. From here to Kamchatka, our beloved public controlist ideals will cause the hearts of the proletariat so wrongfully suppressed by the bundle of sixes or the false after sore for the first time in years. To this end, the soldiers of the union must be turned to men of iron. The we their weapons must become the instruments of our revolutionary fire. Deficit is fine. Should be. Oh, South African conflict. Do 
gonna mute the game. I don't wanna get a copyright strike for. I mean, I'll be getting copyright strikes anyway. Well, I'll be getting copyrighted, but won't be getting copyright struck, so it is different. That's the debt at 52.5%. Now, and our ceiling is 140, I believe. It's important to know. Yeah, 140. Ah, it's all gone. Should be by now. Government prevails in the quickest civil conflict ever. Mass <coughs> Moscovite has collapsed. Where the fuck are the Yankees? Now we shall persuade the party faction. Increase the state influence by a small amount. Gain base stability minus 2%. God, that really was a small round. That was literally one. They weren't lying. Not as expected. They're quite literally one. Have you cored this yet? No, that's sad. <clears throat> now, our northern bastion. We will spend 20 million. A taxi will get two land forts. That's useless. In our north lies a virtually unknown frontier where bandits and beasts alike stalk their prey. Every citizen of our union that is beaten, robbed, or killed is a serious insult to every member of the Soviet Union. Our priority now should be to transform the frontier into a veritable fortress against the northern wolves who might make victims of our citizenry. With enough men, guns, and concrete, we can make sure that an assault from our north would be a fool's errand. Hopefully with enough time and resistance to their excursions into our newly reclaimed territory. Um... We may prove that they are fruitless efforts and stop them altogether. Night watch. Get another level of doctrine? Oh, this is their doctrine. I was going to say, what the hell? I don't really care too much. Now. How the hell did we get that? Army funding. Ah, I see. What? Even, even with a... Really reduced, we get army funding? Hmm. Interesting. All right. Ivan hated watching the border with the Black Army. It was boring, cold, and miserable. At least Ivan had a useful distraction in the form of his friend Alexander. When Ivan got particularly bored, he could at least strike up a conversation. So these Black Army guys, they're totally lying about being anarchists, right? Why would you think that? They've got communes, they hate statists, and they're insufferable. That sounds like an anarchist to me, yes. Alexander replied, not looking away from the empty tundra in front of him. But they have an army, and I thought anarchists hate armies. That steppy guy, or whatever his name is, he's definitely running the Black Army as a junta. It's not, uh, it's just a self-conscious junta. Now these anarchists like armies, apparently the Black Army are totally definitely anarchists also either way they're enemies of the Soviet Union so it doesn't make much difference to us I guess that's true we're still stuck in this tiny hut no matter what yeah the black army is gone at this stage there are more press matters to discuss such as how these coats are too thin scavenger Ah, we lost the production rooms, eh? Why? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, ho! Camarovo. Camarovo's pretty big. But I have no doubt. Oh shit, they're actually evenly matched! Even with the custom TNO divisions? Damn, maybe that encirclement against, uh. It's Meng Jiang. I kind of wrecked you. That's bad. Shame. You still haven't done that yet? Seriously? I have to keep an eye.
and prepare for the struggle. Gain base conflict support plus 15%, manpower plus 5,500, slightly increases conscription to your Jaff policy effectiveness. The final battle lies to the east of the Soviet Union, the bundle of Styxes who lie on the coast. The access uh, to the sea, the ports that were stolen from the people, backed by the godforsaken Japanese of the south. But that support no longer exists. That line is severed. People of the Soviet Union begin to prepare. Our destiny awaits, and it sits along the Siberian coast that borders the Pacific. Our land that was taken from the people against their will. And used to fuel the disgraceful operations the Bundle of Stixists are doing. This time the people will remind the Bundle of Stixists where they belong. And the Soviet Union will make sure that they are sure of it. Even if it means that we will point a gun barrel in their mouth to do so. It is time to march east. Uh, and destroy the Bundle of Stixists once and for all. Mayor Landrot wins. Algerian conflict. Ah yes, they're, they're pushing them back. Good. We don't get any weapons here, do we? I know the uh, the Harbin Three do, but that's because they're getting supplied. We're not getting supplied from anyone else. That's nice. That's a really nice supply from Social Minus Twenty Percent. That's a really strong. Let's check the casualties. I don't know how long until this until the AI just ends us. That's literally not the one I'm clicking. That was really fast, holy shite. 20,000 to 10,000, alright. Ooh, that's really strong. Very nice. Ready the industry. Irkutsk gets two levels of infrastructure, we'll spend 100 million. Our GDP growth will increase by 0.15%, increases our GDP by 200 million. Workers of the Union, be prepared. Our final fight of the Far East dawns upon us, a battle of liberating our fellow peers from the grasp of the bundle of sticks is to the east. While the army will fight them directly, the workers will be the one to create the tools of conflict that will fuel the fight. We need to get everything ready and in order. The production of guns that will be used to kill the uh, enemies of the people must be kicked into high gear. The resources that will fuel the production of said guns will need to be extracted and processed. The factories that will house the creation of our weapons we need every Soviet that is capable of working on the front lines of industry, while the brave men on the front lines against the bundle of sticks will fight. The ones who will stay home and work in the factories will contribute to the fight just as much as the ones on the battlefield. The next stage is gone. Lattice. When this military government steps down. Infantry anti-tank too, fantastic. <coughs> Alright, begin working on the RPG-2. Enables improved anti-tank equipment, enables anti-tank guided missiles. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, yes, we know what RPG-2 is now, therefore we now know how to guide missiles. An improved shorter fired missile launcher, it's not a missile launcher. Well, yeah. Missile is anything that is thrown, but kind of when it comes to 
rocketry. Missiles are guided and rockets kind of aren't. I believe is the justification. Or, may, or maybe it's the other way around. Incorporating design improvements such as lighter materials and um, like, an, like an ATGM. Like that's a guided missile, an RPG. You know, it's rocket propelled, it's not guided. Such as lighter materials and better sights and high explosive anti tank heat war warheads. Oh, I remember when uh, when Toolbox Theory was a tool, yeah, when Toolbox Theory first, uh, first released the 1964 Winter Olympic thing, they just go, it is just spam. Now, dispatch the Commissar's Manpower plus 1000, gains frontline Commissar's, which grants Division Recovery at plus 25%, War Support minus 5%, Division Defense plus 10% for 1080 days. That'll take us. Yeah, that'll nearly take us up. Yeah, it'll take us well through the Far Eastern conflicts anyway. Division Defense plus. Uh, yeah. Highly increases monthly uh, military training policy effectiveness drift. Our reclamations of the lands we lost may be fast, but we cannot know for sure that the lands that we take back for the people might contain fellow comrades following the revolution. We need to make sure that the people who live in the land we take back will support us, and if that is not the case, we must send NKVD commissars into the field to ensure that. Whether that be through violent or more peaceful, convincing measures, the people who reside within our newly regained territory cannot be people who have betrayed the Union, bundle of sticksists, monarchists, natsocks, and whatever else the people might have turned to. We need to make sure our lands are filled not with them, but with the people of the revolution and of redism. Mom usually is kicking in the door of Actobe. Can't wait for Central Asian content. Oh, he's forming. Division recovery rate plus 50%. Are you shitting me? You shitting me? What? Ooh, we can expand the NKVD's jurisdiction. Persuade the party faction. Now, expand NKVD jurisdiction. The jurisdiction that the NKVD possesses shall be increased to grant their units unrestricted freedom to act in frontline operations. A new NKVD rifle division will be raised in the capital. Six thousand. Get rid of it. Support equipment are we short? We just got another production unit. 182, that's not much. The who? The Convention People's Party. I've never seen you pop up before because I, uh, because I've never said it to spawn in 1964. Nice, nice. Hope you win. Streamline the supply chain again. Streamline supply chain, which grants supply consumption minus 20%. Yeah, Civil War in Ghana. The drums of war beat again in Africa. Who shall win? Is Benin in this? Yes. Now, streamline the supply chain gains. Streamline supply chain, which grants uh, supply consumption minus 20%, supply grace plus 24 hours for 1,080 days. Damn.
fuel the reclamation of our former lands in the Far East. Our supplies, uh, our suppliers, our supplies should be uh, must be able to get to their lo necessary locations as smoothly as possible, and ideally without any interruptions or mishaps caused. Could you consider what would happen if our guns went into the hands of the would-be chair of the revolution? Gather the workers of the union and get them to work and make sure these instructors are loud and clear. Build the roads that we will drive across, construct the railroads we will deliver through, standardize the equipment we will use, prepare the infrastructure necessary to store supplies. The Soviet Union will gladly thank any comrade in the revolution that helps to fuel the cost. Further, these distances across Siberia are vast, but with the help of the people, we can make them shorter. Jean Bichelon. Looks like an entirely different individual from the guy in the, in the event. for the Algerian Union. Oh, the West African conflict. Never seen this one either. West Africa has finally exploded into chaos today as the Pan African Liberation Front has begun a coordinated attack against the Free French's military lines. Following the clashes within the Ghanaian civil conflict with the FMA, the PLA, PALF has declared war against the imperialists and pathetic collaborators of the French. Following extensive diplomatic and military maneuvers in the region as the disorganized Western nations of Africa band together on the F under the FMA, many voiced doubt that the alliance will persevere, uh, though some still hold hope for the French, mainly those in the OFN. As the FMA forms its defence against the Pan-Africans, the superpowers have placed their bets as the fate of West Africa, as both the FMA and the PALF find themselves with newfound support with the Americans and Japanese, respectively. This doesn't... Yeah, I shouldn't have done this at all. France is going to fucking stomp them. Gonna, yeah, France is gonna fucking wreck them. Never pick 64. 64 is best of the French. You don't even have any troops. Industrial investments, please. I'm not surprised if the Germans don't have the, uh... Oh yeah, I had another war. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Now, not one step back. And not one step back, which grants division organization plus five, division recovery at minus five percent to max entrenchment plus one. To the brave Soviets spreading the revolution back to the areas under the filthy bundle of sticks. Just remember, this is a fight the Union is not ready to lose. For the glorious revolution to succeed and for the will of the people to prevail over all others. Not a single step back would be permitted, no retreats to not let the bundle of sticks of the Far East win. We, the people, are ready to throw as much as we can at them just to prove that the revolution is not the right bear to be messing with. If this means we are sending our men to die in the fields of Siberia, then these men will be remembered as heroes of the Union. The ones who brought justice and liberated the workers suffering under the bundle of sticks and help to restore the Union closer towards our former glory. Bye-bye, Kemerovo. Okay. 
bad train anymore, man. It's fine. Transistor computing, fantastic. Now well, that's all that caught up. Straight over here, in stream management. hasn't decided to uh, end the war yet. New agricultural methods, please. That's all I should do with the focus on research. Yeah. Now the Far Eastern Campaign gets event the Far Eastern Campaign, gains the Far Eastern Front, which grants division um, speed plus 15%, winter attrition minus 25%, non-combat out of supply penalties minus 25%, uh, terrain penalty reduction plus 10% for a full year. Finally, with our industry prepared and our men ready to die for the good of the revolution, there is only one step left, advance, move forward, soldiers of the Union. Our test begins against the bundle of sixes to the east, show them no mercy and slaughter them all. March forward into their, into their houses of cards and knock them all over, kick the front doors of each and every one in and shoot the owners in the head. <laughs> Fucking hell, you go down. The revolutionary, uh, the revolutionary returns to the varies, and we are ready to, to be here to stay. The people will show uh, how they, the people will show how they prevail without the need of turning to such disgusting ideologies. Reminding them all, remind them all about how glorious Russia used to be under Redism. Oh, so Peron is back. Oh, what? We actually managed to. Do Damn, I'm, I'm shocked. We actually managed to knock them out there, but Mali is about to fall. Unless you can quickly build on it and knock out the French. <laughs> Let me read that again. Kick the front doors of each and every one and then shoot the owners in the head. Fucking hell. Uh, I need to click that. No, we must appear for this new threat. Oh shit, you actually lost the capital. Oh damn. Oh shit, I actually thought I thought that was the free friends the free friends getting knocked down. That would have been cool. I trust you've got that. Oh yeah, you've got that under control. No problem. Arise from a risey workers from your slaves. Why bother giving these these difficulties? No point. I'm not gonna go after Yakutia now because we have a very small border with them and I don't have to fucking march all the way over there. You know. Eastern campaign, Genrik Yagoda looked on, uh, looked on with interest as his generals made plans on the large map that represented the Russian Far East. The base of the map itself was from the 1940s and it had been hastily drawn over and marked to show what the Red Army believed to be the strategic situation. Uh, 
As you can see, comrades, the bundle of sixes are divided and weak. We couldn't have asked. We couldn't have asked uh, for a better opportunity to strike. Field Marshal Yushkov uh, uh, said as he gestured towards the... Field Marshal Yushkov? I think you mean fucking General Yushkov. As he gestured towards the enemy positions on the map, represented with the lines of red marker, Lushkov was not wrong until on the situation of farther east was not exactly ideal, but it all seems to suggest the bundle of sixes conflict lords were too busy squabbling amongst themselves uh, to offer any serious resistance to an invasion. You go to his attention, still focused on the map, spoke up. Lushkov, how ready are our forces? Lushkov backed away from the map and turned to Yagoda, as ready as they'll ever be, comrade Yagoda. Then I think, comrade, that it's time to put our plan into motion. These bundle of sixes dogs have blighted Russia with their toxic presence for too long. It would bring me great pleasure to see them crushed like the vermin they are. You go to pause for a moment. Remember that this is a very important... Okay. Remember that this is a very important step towards reunification, comrades. First, we retake the Far East, then we liberate the rest of Russia and beyond. I will not accept failure. Not when the fate of the Soviet Union still lies on the precipice. You go to short speech would resonate heavily... Ah, fuck! Okay, no. I'm not willing to... No. I will reload. And, uh... See what that does. Be back soon. Now, here we are. Ah, good, that's in. Uh, okay, okay, get rid of all that stuff. Uh, that's okay, that's fine. Click away. Uh, the next few months would see the uh, would resonate heavily with all who heard. The next few months would see the lands of the Far East drenched in blood, and with a great deal of effort and a little luck, only the true heirs of the Soviet Union would remain standing once the smoke had cleared. Yagoda would make sure of that. The road to victory would be paved, paved with blood. Plus 25%. Let us prepare raid against the Divine Mandate of Siberia. Also, Saka decided to raid us. We will not back down so easily. Twenty-five percent of power, one percent base stability, one hundred and seventy-five units of basic infantry. <laughs> Team on. Okay. Holy shit! You actually won. I'm gobsmacked. Good job. <laughs> fucking Malinovsky's fucking getting on in years now at this stage. Bloody hell. Operation Uranus. Gain base, counter support plus 10%, gets event against the bundle of sixes. For the Union to begin flourishing again, we require sea access once more, and what better way to regain our access to the march east and eliminate the threats that reside along the coastline? Now we will raid. Free military factories, alright. Imagine the depths that just went off the fucking cliff. Air fuse tribute. Alrighty. Can wait till we re reorganize. Oh, no, that'll do now. 
No, I didn't finish reading that. A vital part of the, of the Soviet Union is to, if if the Soviet Union, yeah, a vital part of the Soviet Union is to ever rise in the ashes. And like how the bandit king stole from us, we will steal the rightful property property of the people back. The Soviet army will prepare for war against Amar, and the failures of Radzievsky will bite him. As the Soviet Union knocks on his door to eliminate his puny bundle of sticks of state, we will show no mercy, and we will eliminate their pitiful attempt at unifying Russia once and for all, comrades. It is time for Operation Umbriel. Gains Operation Umbriel and uh, Division Recovery. Rate. Is, wait, this is Umbriel. The people require their access to the coast of Siberia and the fresh air of the Pacific Ocean, ocean so, that we, so that we may export the revolution's influence further, while also gaining the ability for some import of necessary materials if need be. Our men in industry are ready. We must begin to draft our plans for Operation Uranus. It is a simple task. Eliminate the enemy of our eastern opponents. Walk in and take it back to the revolution and capture their leader. After we have done as such, we can restore the old oblasts of before right, uh, right, where, they belong, right, right, right where they belong. Back into the hands of the people and the eastern threat completely eliminated. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, this doesn't count, so I'm not going to read it. Operation Aerial, which grants division recovery plus 15%, trans Baikal principality attack bonus against country plus 10% for 270 days. Irkutsk declares war on Cheetah. The state of Cheetah sits to our east and occupies territory that possesses resources vital to our needs. The situation is obvious and simple. Prepare the People's Army, prepare our guns, and march towards them and go to war. It seems they need a reminder on how the re revolution always prevailed over the Russian monarchy, and so we must initiate Operation Aerial. The time has finally come to take back our rightful lands and combat the monarchists. Ah, so they did do us, you bollocks. Well, that's cancelled. Now it's Operation Miranda. Yes, yes, sir. It's fine, it's a long time. Now, against the bundle of sticksists, does this really count? Yes, it does, because we're fighting Makovsky. The scene was dreadfully similar to Commissar Krukov, the distant thumping of artillery, the mud and dirt, the wide-eyed, terrified young souls looking to their Commissar for guidance. The only noticeable difference here is that Krukov was the one being relied on. I was just like you once, comrade, shaking my boots, wondering if I would live to see tomorrow. I was there when the bundle of six bastards invaded our motherland, and I was there when we almost sent them crawling back to their holes. I have seen, I have seen what cruelties these bundle of sixes are capable of in victory, and I promise, and I made a promise to myself to never allow such and such injustices to happen ever again. The Commissar got up and stood in front of his men. He could feel the orator inside him taking over. This is not just a conflict against those who betray the people but a war against uh, to repulse get out of the way but a war against to repulse the dark clouds of bundle of sticks and that loom over everything we hold dear it is not wrong to feel fear but it is wrong to allow your fear to shape you think of your friends your homes your loved ones would you stand by as these bundle of sixes dogs march into in to impose their murderous rule over them comrades put your fear behind you and fill your hearts with rage build this anger within you and use it well when the time comes to send these murdering bundle of sixes bastards to an early grave Krukov's short speech was punctuated by fierce passion and tears from the men. The, for once, the commissar could see a fire burning in their eyes. Deep down, he wondered how many of them would still be alive after today. Not one step back. Not to go to war in like 11 days. Please hurry up and win that. Operation Miranda. Oh, thank God. <laughs> who's better, you or Lushkov? Probably It'll just exactly much better though. Yeah, I'll keep you instead. That's fine. Yeah, now, food to the hungry. Gosh, not going hungry tonight. Gain base ability plus 2%, gain base confidence for plus 1%, political power plus 25, and we get 76 million. We actually already have 114 million. Pay the debt. Now, 15% recovery rate bonus, 10% uh, attack bonus against Magadan. We declare war on them. While we are preoccupied with the treasonous revolt of the reactionary collaborationist factions who are east to resolve their power struggle with violence, now the moderate quote unquote uh, bundle of sixes, Mikhail Makovsky, a seasoned soldier against his own people, controls the coast under the mantle of a reformed RFP. Makovsky's lack of principles are breathtaking, initially helping the Japanese oppress the people of the Far East. He has now painted himself as a loyal client of the United States. Not even an inch of the uh, Soviet Union can be allowed to remain in the hands of bundle of sixes parasites. The NKVD will purge the Far East of these nationalists, traitors, and restore to popular control. Are we actually in position? Yeah, we are, are we? No. One, one hasn't even reached this area yet. That's fine, though. Well, no, we just got RPG-2s into production. Fantastic. Yeah. 
here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bump that up. We are going to get infrastructure going. And we are going to take the production units out of military factories and put them into civilian factories. Just try and help with the deficit somehow. Fuck it, I'm not, I don't want to fight a two-front war, so we will not be doing that. How many men have you got? Not many. It only one of you moves. Why? Why are you going up here? No, hold on. You gotta be shitting me. How are we losing? Captured the airbase after a particularly bloody siege of men have captured Cherio Mushki airbase from the cowardly enemy and pillaged the facilities of any retrievable plunder. With most of the airbase left intact after the siege, we find that the field may be able to put. Uh, we find that the field may be able to put into purpose sooner rather than later. Oh yeah, the airfield. My bad. Uh, purposely sooner rather than later, and purposely sooner rather. Than, uh, the aircraft that's in the hangars sulk. Their metal wings still in, uh, still and unused. With an entire air base, air base now under our control, our territories can now support the squadrons of planes tearing across the ashen Siberian skies. With the airfield as an asset in our favour, our men may advance with these Siberian wastes, knowing full well that pilots watch over them from the skies. The east is cold and her winds are colder, but no such chill could render our determination to clash and to fly. Fighter production cost minus 10% reliability plus 5%. Interceptor production cost minus 10% reliability plus 5%. Air, air accidents chance minus 15%. Air superiority plus 10%. Well, I suppose we could use these... Air supply. What 
What I will do, though, is that seeing as how we will be able to eventually <clears throat> do all of these, we might as well read them. The bandit king on the Fari sits on one of the most important treasures to the Soviet Union. The treasure that they stole from us to see access our access to the Pacific Ocean, a vital part of the Soviet Union is ever to rise from the ashes. Uh, yeah. We've read this part. We will sow no mercy and we will eliminate their pitiful attempt at unifying Russia once and for all. Comrade, that is time for Operation Umbriel. We'll just pretend that this is an anti partisan operation rather than an actual invasion. Sins of our roots. That was Vyanska defeating the. Yes, yes, good. I was going to say. Don't tell me you lost to them. I'll have enough time to knock out in the thieves. Oh, never mind, never mind. I think I'll come to Now we should also read this Operation Ariel. The state of Cheetah sits where Eastern occupies territory that possesses vital resources vital to our needs. The, the, the solution is obvious and simple. Uh, Soviet Union reaches the sea. Yeah, 
So you part in the African Revolution is not enough to write a revolutionary song. You must fashion the revolution with the people. The songs will come by themselves. Strengthen General Secretary powers. The power of the General Secretary of the Red Party will be greatly expanded. The power of the state faction shall be assured. Guess when the party shackled. Industrial investments, of course. The guard stood by the door of the room menacingly, the gun allegedly for self-defense apparent, and the NKVD badge shining on their uniforms. In a loud voice, Yagoda exclaimed what the new purpose, uh, proposed decree would entail to the Presidium's deputies by order of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet. The following actions will be taken to ensure the safety and the prosperity of the Union. Firstly, the offices of... See, this is really important because no one else does it as far as I'm aware. The offices of General Secretary of the Red Party of the Soviet Union and Premier of the Soviet Union shall be merged. That's why... You guys might anyone who partook in the uh, the poll of uh, the poll I did who, like who was your favorite Soviet unifier? That's why I referred to Genry Yoda as supreme leader not general secretary because he merges general secretary and premier kind of supreme leader is kind of a thing, you know So I called him that Which is why I'm going to refer to him as, as supreme leader for the rest of the run because he there is no G um, uh, GS CPSU anymore the same way there is no supreme leader of the Soviet Union, it, they've been merged, so now it's Supreme Leader. Um, the current uh, General Secretary, Genro Kigoda, will assume the duties of Premier while maintaining his current position and powers as General Secretary. Secondly, any votes held on the potential dismissal, uh, dismissal of Premier Yakov Agranov will be deemed as ineffective, owing to his missing at the time of the alleged decision. Comrade Konstantin Chernenko shall thus be instated as Commissar of Foreign Affairs, while Comrade Besnov will be indefinitely removed of his current position. The same faces that so recently were brave enough to stand against Kigoda and his closest allies. Uh, Fantastic. Port of Magadan captured. Uh, in the Presidium session now seemed obedient and almost terrified. No one dared to respond. They all simply stayed quiet. It was once again the director of the NKVD who had to break the silence. May I assume everyone approves the decree? There was no answer. Then it is in effect from now on. Not a single deputy had opened his mouth since Yagoda had described the plan to revert the revealed plots of the party's officials. Uh, whose, gr whose grand plan to climb to power had been shattered in minutes. The new foreign minister, the, the general secretary's man, was allowed to enter the room again. As for Besanov, he was escorted out by the uh, two guards. Needless to say, he was not to be seen again by his comrades, at least from the walls of the Supreme Soviet. Africa breeds. Fantastic. Secret police always comes out on top. Increases state influence by a large amount. Physical power plus one. Port of Magadan captured as our troops rushed um, past the Far Eastern frontiers. Their assault on enemy lands was halted only by the sea. The Great Pacific, open and wide, had met our men after bloody battle um, as the port of Magadan had come under our control. The icy and choppy waters stretched for miles in every direction in front of them. The mysterious stretch of Siberian waters was a home to by far the most significant port in the eastern Russian wastes. A hub of trading and smuggling with a particular taste for Japanese American goods and American goods. The Port of Magadan opens up greater opportunities for our administration to not only trade wares but also make a name for ourselves across the globe. Indeed, with this, with this invaluable port under our control, we pray to see our foot in the door to international recognition and trade. The gateway to Russia has been secured and add Port of Magadan, which grants convoy production cost minus 50%, dockyard output plus 10%, dockyard construction speed plus 10%. And only uh, the first one there is useful. The rest doesn't really matter. So, we have knocked them out. Damn. Them combined didn't uh, add up to our population. But alright lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We, we managed to knock them all out at the end. And then in the next episode, we shall go for our Yakutia and, of course, get into our conflict with the divine mandate of Siberia. I shall see you then.